Hello viewer, I'm Trainer Lex again and today I'm going to take you through electrical materials, tools and equipment. So as you can see the bench behind me, I'll be taking you one by one through materials, tools and equipment and what the difference between the three. So stay put and let me take you right away. Let's get started. So, as you can see, here on this bench, we have a quite a number of material. Material, these are things that are consumed in the site. So, all these things you see, these are things that are consumed in the site. So, if I was to carry out a domestic installation, and I'm using this, uh, the, 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 the list that I give of quotation, I usually give list of material. Because I don't intend to work with any of the material out of sight as an electrical uh, technician. I'm an same kama fundi. So I'll take you through a series of uh, 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 material as it is. So I'll start with the simplest, which is a switch. And as you can see, this one, this one is a pole switch, and in this case, is a one-way, one-gang switch. You can see it only has two terminals. Even though we have three holes, but two terminals. The L1 hole here is, uh, it has no terminal, so it's just a hole. In that case, you'll see the common on the top and the L2. In that case, uh, that's a one-way, one-gang switch. The next one follows, this one is also a pole switch. And you can see it has three terminals, the way I said. If I arrange it, the way I put it in the diagram, I have the common and I have the live one and live two. So this switch usually works in pair with the another one as you can see here. So this one is a two-way one-gun switch. Another one here we have, this one you can see we have two poles on the other end or the two strokes. So this one is a, a two-way two-gun switch. As you can see behind we have six terminals. Two common and then two live one, two live two. That is a two-way Two gang switch. What it means that this gang controls a circuit with another pair of two-way switch, and another this gang also pre uh, controls another switch with a pair of another uh, two-way one gang switch. Then we have an, uh, the same uh, two-way two gang switch, but a different mode, uh, or different brand, as you can see. This is the same as this one. And then we have intermediate switch. The switch I said that it comes between when I want to increase the number of ties. So. This one is an intermediate switch. As you can see, it has four terminals. And the terminals are labeled as line one, line two, and line one, and line two. So what happens is that if I want to bring in a third switch, when the two-way switch, as I want to control a lamp or a, or a bulb or a fluorescent fitting from different, three different positions, what I'll do, I'll do is just I'll take two two-way switches, and then the live one and live, uh, live two from first two-way switch will go to these two terminals here. And then the other two-way switch will also take from this terminal to this terminal. That's it as when we'll be doing the wiring diagram and the, when the ones that I've already shown you. That's how this one intermediate switch. When you see it from the front side, you'll not, you'll not know the difference. The difference is actually in the terminal representation. So quickly let me take you to another kind of switch. This one we call it a double pole switch. A double pole switch, we usually use it for instant shower or water heaters. So for instant shower, we use this switch. This switch is different from the rest I've shown you because it allows both live, neutral, and ground wire to pass through the switch. For these ones, only the live wire or the first line goes through the switch. The neutral and the ground goes direct to the, to the lamp. But this one, the live, the neutral, and the ground goes through this double pole switch before it exits to go to the instant shower, the one you see here. You can see we have three cables for this instant shower. Uh -huh. If it's your first time seeing it, don't worry. You'll see it in the near future. So, all the, the, all the three lines or the three conductors uh, from the consumer unit will come to this switch before they continue to the uh, instant shower. Another switch that uh, also looks like switch but is not a switch uh, is a bed switch, as you can see. A bed switch, uh, it has a, a, a holder 
the one where you fix the lamp. Uh, the conductor is already rolled, they, so this conductor is so long. And then we have, uh, we have this one where I can tap to the source now. Let's say if the bulb was to be in the center of the room, I will connect this to where the bulb was supposed. Then this one, I will ensure the bulb now falls like a ceiling rose. And then the switch is here, as you can see. So this is the switch itself. So this one is a bed switch. Another thing I think I, think I forgot about switch, I'll be introducing other kind of switch, but uh, uh, shortly I can, I'll take you later in that part. We have other things like push button switch. This one is a push button switch, as you can see. This push button switch with the uh, indicator lamp. When I, when I put it on, this one is the, the, the normally open switch, uh, the start button. So if I press it on, it will uh, give a green glow. We have another, the one I said, the normally closed switch, which will give me a red glow. And then we have a, a bell push button. As you can see, this one is a bell push button. It looks similar to a two-way, but uh, you can see we only have two-way. But how it does, you see, I'll keep on pressing, but it goes back to official position. This one is a bell push button switch. So I'll go, come back to the, uh, the machine and bell later. So let's continue with the socket outlets. So the socket outlets, we have different types. Uh, the ones I have here are the ones that are switched. They have switches, I mean. So this one is a, a single uh, switched socket outlet with a pilot lamp. As you can see, this is where the light will be when the socket is on. And then this one is a, a twin or a double uh, switched socket outlet. We have a double switched socket outlet, but a, a double socket outlet which is unswitched they don't have switches those are sample uh, then we have other power uh, power outlet in this case is the cooker unit the cooker unit we have two of two kinds so we have this one this one is cooker unit without socket outlet so this one is cooker unit without socket outlet as you can see the terminals the way it is it has two live two neutral and we have this metallic part in the sideways for the grounding. So this one is a cooker unit. It allows current up to 45 amperes to flow through it. Uh, so this one works closely with a, a terminal box. So terminal box, uh, you have to connect to a terminal box after you have done there. You have connected the cooker switch. Then this one is a cooker switch, uh, outlet with so cooker with the socket outlet. As you can see, the socket outlet. So most people do mistake of connecting their cooker on the socket, but that's not what we should, uh, should be happening. The, the cooker should be connected directly from behind. As you can see, we have the input and the output. So the output, the input receives the power from the consumer unit through the circuit breaker, and then the output goes to the terminal uh, box, the one I've shown you this. So, so from this terminal box, that's where you'll take in the cable to the cooker uh, itself. So that's how we should be doing it, not uh, taking the cable, because the cooker usually comes with the plug, you just go ahead and plug it on the socket. This socket is for other additional activities. With this socket, with this cooker, you, you, it means you can continue using other uh, appliances in the kitchen, like the mic uh, microwave, the toaster, the coffee maker, you can continue using them. That's why it is there. So it's not for, for the cooker itself. Yeah, other than that, I'll go ahead to the lamps, we have the, uh, this one is a lamp holder, as you can see. This one, we, should, we call it straight lamp holder. This one is for the indoors. We also have an uh, angle lamp holder that are uh, for outdoor. Uh, they, they come with an angle. This one is a ceiling, a ceiling rose. It allows you to allow the lamp to, to be not fixed on the, on the, on the ceiling, but uh, to hang a little bit. And then we have uh, the junction box. The junction box allows me to make uh, a various connection, and uh, not various, but various jointing. It gives me room for more jointing and also to reduce path, especially if more conductors are going the same direction. So I think uh, all those I'm talking about, those are materials, things that you usually see in the room. So if you understand the, term uh, the terminals, the alignment in each material, you're likely to carry out installation, so simple. Quickly, let me take you through the boxes. The boxes, these are things that we do during the chess work, the one that goes in the wall, or whether you're doing surface mount, 
or you are doing installation inside the wall, you will have to chase the wall. Then this is what goes in the wall. So this one is, uh, we call them MK boxes. This one is a double MK boxes. And this one is a single MK boxes. Then we have patrices. This one is patrices. They are good. So this is usually suitable for surface mount. This one usually goes with the trunking. But uh, the MK goes, uh, boxes goes with the concrete. The trunking and the concrete, those are a, a category of material. We call them enclosures. They enclose uh, the cables. So the conduit, uh, I'll be getting there soon. So those are uh, so for the patrice, we have also a, a single, and we have double. But as you can see, also there's different. This one is deep patrice. They are so deep, and then we have this kind of here, which is shallow patrice. If I if I join them together, you'll see the difference. When I say the the other one is shallow and the other one is deep, so that's the difference. Then quickly, let me take you through the circular boxes so the circular boxes we have very different kinds even one is missing here the angled circular boxes so we have the end circular boxes then we have the true circular boxes allows you to to take it from one source to continue to the rest then we have the t circular boxes or sometimes we call it one way two way three way in that manner and then we have all through circular box or the four way circular box so these one are very important. These are the ones that usually you see them in the hole once uh, the plastering is done. And uh, this is where we connect usually our lamp holders and any uh, even the junction box goes in that position. So we also have the accessories that uh, accompany the conduits. Uh, the conduits, as you can see, this one, uh, we have, instead of making bend using a bend spring, you can just go and buy a bend. So this one will give you a clean bend that uh, it will reduce, uh, when, whenever you're making, a, you're drawing cables, will reduce a lot of hitches in drawing of cables. And then we have, uh, this one we call it uh, coupler, allows me to join two, uh, to join two uh, conduits together. This is what a coupler is. So it allows me to join two cables together. And then we have this, uh, uh, this one we call the saddle clip, uh, to be specific is uh, what we call space saddle clip. So what it does is for surface mount. So what I'll do is uh, I will I will mount the saddle on the board or in the wall, and then after that I will mount my conduit. My conduit now will go through it uh, in a, that manner. So it allows me to give a clean surface mount, as you can see. That's a, that's about a conduit. We also have a rail. Uh, this rail allows us to to connect things like uh, circuit breakers. In the consumer unit, in the distribution uh, board, so you're likely to get the rail there. We also have uh, cutout. Cutout. These are uh, uh, materials that you'll find them in the meter box. So the cutout allows me to to take now power from the service cable that is coming from the service pole out there to the uh, to the consumer meter box. Before it goes to the circuit breaker, it has to go through the energy meter. In this case, this one is a single-phase energy meter, but the analog one. And as as nowadays, we have tokens, and uh, it has taken charge of all that. Remember, you can still use uh, circuit breakers, but uh, with a high quantity to replace that. Nowadays, we don't have meter, uh, main switches like uh, before. So this one is a, a, con is a, a circuit breaker, I mean. And this one is a double-pole circuit breaker. I'll be showing you others, like we have uh, the three-pole uh, three circuit breaker as you can see so this one is suitable for uh, three phase supply but uh, this one is suitable for